G'day everyone, welcome back to the shop. Today I need to make a couple of these. So uh, let's document the process. I don't have a ball turning attachment here for my lathe, so I'll try and cut this ball on the milling machine. Let's get into it. Now I wasn't happy with the way it's chipping there, I'm, I am getting some chatter here because it's unsupported at the end. Um, I'll probably just up the feed rate a little bit off camera here and uh, bring this down. This end here needs to be 3 eighths of an inch. On second thoughts here I will centre drill this end and support it with a live centre. Now you won't believe this but this old centre drill would have to be probably 10 to 20 years old, it's branded p &N. Now p and is an Australian company that were bought out. Okay, they were bought out by Sutton Tools, right? As a rule of thumb, you really should oil these. However, if you take it easy, you won't break them. There you go. It's not even hot to touch. I can hold on to the tip without it even... There's no heat in that whatsoever. This is an Australian made live centre by a company called Daintree Tools. Um, these can be purchased through Arthur at Live Tools if you're after one. Okay, let's get back into this. Look at that, we're starting to chip now, where before it wasn't chipping because it was unsupported. Now if that was a finishing cut I wouldn't wind backwards like that as you would know I'd back the tool up before I retract it. Um, I've got another 10 millimeters to take off this. It's going to bore you so I'll bring you back when I'm getting close. Right I've taken a few passes here let's just check it out what we're currently at and we're at about 15 millimeters so we've still got at least five millimeters to go. I'll stop the lathe to uh, show you where I'm up to. Um, you may have noticed that I've upped the RPM to about 1,300. I've even slowed down the feed rate to about 0.1 of a millimetre per revolution. Now, 3 8 of an inch as a decimal is 0.375. And I want to be in metric, I need to be around 9.525. So we'll put this on, we may have a slight taper. And I'm currently at 9.5, uh, what's that, 9.57. So I'm pretty close. I probably with a, uh, 
a bit a little tiny spring pass or a, a tickle with a file I'd probably get that. Yeah just off camera I gave this end a little bit of a tickle with my lathe file and if uh, we mic it up on uh, 9.57 Five six, five five and a half, a little bit under there. We've got a discrepancy from right up the top here, down the end here, roughly 30 micron, give or take. Um, you know, for an old vintage engine, I think she'll be fine. You would have noticed I cut this off in the uh, little bandsaw. I've got to take off about 40 thou here now just to get it down to that 22 diameter by 22 mil long. What I've decided to do, I'm uh, just going to knock off a bit of a 45 degree angle here just to take a bit of bulk out of the right hand and left hand sides. So we're going to move on over to the milling machine. Now before I can set up the dividing head here, I went into my CAD system and uh, modelled what it is I have to make. Now you notice here that I've roughly worked out the angle that I need to be on is between 15 and 16 degrees. Although the CAD model said 16 degrees, I'll adjust this and then take a look at it. So currently, whilst I'm in the machine here, I'm just setting it up with the probe. I need to find the center position in the y-axis to do this job here today. So here we'll just jog up and touch down on the Z to find my Z0 height uh, and then back and forth to find the center position of the y-axis. Now having one of these probes certainly makes your life uh, easier in the machine shop than using a wobbler or a, one of the light LED light type. These probes really come into their own. So here's the boring bar that I'm into the machine now. You'll notice that I've put the, the actual boring bar tool, uh, I've turned it around the opposite way. Now to do this a day, I have to spin the milling machine in reverse. Now these adjusting bolts here allow me to tilt the dividing head roughly to the degrees that I want. So what I'm using here, I've just put in my little screw jack and I can get better control over this now, more finite control than trying to get the correct angle. All right, so now a little bit more finite adjustment with the screw jack. You'll see here that I'm touching off in the back corner. So I'm roughly around 15 and a half, 16 degrees here, going off the scale on the dividing head. And I'm just moving the axis around so I can get that. And you can see there that I'm just slightly below the center. 
and right there it says it's between 15 16 degrees righto so let's turn the milling machine on in reverse and start that spindle now i've already set the dividing head to 22 millimeters uh, it's it's approximately set up here at about 22.5 millimeters what i'm doing here is just gently lifting up the knee until I get to my zero depth in the z-axis now this is the first pass that I'm doing and what I didn't know was that my boring bar had come loose in the boring head you'll see here that it was taking a big cut and then that cut diminished so off camera I stop the milling machine and retighten that boring bar and you'll see it an improvement on my second pass. Just going to oil that up, get a little bit of oil on it. That, uh, steel is not easy to cut in this operation now I've sped the footage up here to save you the pain of watching it and you can see here now that it is cutting much better now I've tightened that boring bar head up and uh, stopped the tool from twisting now what I'm actually doing here I'm actually lifted up a little bit and dropping down in Z each time about half a mil to get closer and closer to that size and you can see with every pass that I do, the ball is starting to appear and look a lot better. So this is normal speed now. You can see how we get the job done. Now it is slow going, is, uh, as you know there's 40 turns to uh, one revolution of that dividing head. Righto, so this is the final pass. And I've actually got the milling machine at high speed here. And the finish is outstanding. I, I couldn't believe the finish I was getting. Although I was running that boring head rather fast. Righto, so let's drop the bed down now. Turn the machine off and take a look at it. I'm pretty happy with those results. And I'm sure my customer will be also happy with it as well. Here's a few photos of what the old one and the new one looks like. And you've got to be happy with that, guys. Thanks so much for watching. See you next week.